So if you're here, it's because you want to get Google services running in a sandbox on Graphene OS. Let me try that again. Graphene, Graphene. So some reasons why you might want to install Google services in a sandbox is that you have apps that require Google services, you want notifications to work completely, or there are some Google apps that you wish would function like Google Camera. So with Graphene OS, there is no micro G. You're installing the actual Google Play services on your device. They will be installed in a sandbox. And then with Graphene OS, there's a compatibility layer built in that interfaces with the Google Play services. So before we actually begin the install, the first thing you need to do is decide where you want to install these Google Play services. Now, what do I actually mean by that? So to help me explain this concept, I'm gonna use this fancy diagram to run through an example. So here's an example of the owner profile you currently have installed on your phone. Each of these sandboxes on the screen represents an app. By default, every app you install on your phone is sandboxed in Android. And what that means is that these apps cannot communicate with each other. They're in their own sandbox unless you explicitly give permission for them to talk to one another. So when you install an app, sandbox, sandbox, sandbox. And so that brings us to the first option, which is installing Google Play services in this owner profile in another sandbox. That is the easiest option. All your apps will have the ability to use those services and things will just work. The other option, which I'm gonna demonstrate in this video is to create a completely separate profile where you're going to install these Google Play services. So essentially we had the owner profile here on the left and the right, we're going to create another profile just for the Google Play services. So the reason why you might wanna do this is that profiles are a way to group apps into completely isolated workspaces. So over here, we have the Google Play services profile. Any apps installed in this profile, including Google Play services, cannot communicate with the owner profile at any time. So these apps can communicate with one another. They can use the Google Play services installed on this completely separate profile, but the apps you have installed on your owner profile will not be able to use those services. So the downside to this is that if you do wanna use the Google Play services, you'll have to switch to your other profile where you have them installed and they will not be on your main owner profile. Switching profiles is pretty easy and I'll demonstrate that in the video. So I would suggest creating a separate profile where you're going to install the services. If you don't like it, you can always switch at a later time, but that's how I would start and test them out. So the first step in the process is to follow the instructions. I'll leave a link down below to the official install guide, but don't just follow strangers on the internet follow the official instructions in case the process changed since the time of the recording. So now that you have the instructions brought up, the next thing we wanna do is create a separate profile for the Google Play services. So I will be demonstrating this on a clean install of Graphene OS on my Pixel 5a. The only changes I've made are to the background so that we can tell the difference between the profiles. And I've also installed Aurora Store for the demonstration later to show that the services are working as expected. So to create our separate profile, we're going to swipe up, go into settings, Scroll all the way down to the bottom, tap system, select multiple users. So by default, this is disabled. There's a note here that's worth reading that kind of describes how multiple users work. So in order to enable that, select that option and we're going to select add user. Click okay. And then name your new user. I'm just gonna call this GP Sandbox. Once you type it out, click okay. There's some other options on here for the user. I'm not going to enable any of these because I don't want to restrict it at all. And now the next step is to actually switch to our newly created user. So I had to switch the camera to the phone screen as screen recording is not supported across multiple profiles due to their sandbox nature. So there's a couple different ways to switch profiles that I'm gonna demonstrate. But the first way is just to select the GP sandbox from the multiple user screen and then select switch to whatever you called your profile. There's just a quick disclaimer that says make sure that person is available to set up their profile. In a traditional sense, the person would set up their own pin code, passcode, whatever else on that profile, which is why it mentions they should be present. But for our case, we're just setting it up to sandbox the services to a separate profile, so that's not necessary. So select Setup Now. So you might notice a new option you see down here. We can see End Session. That's for the separate profile that we're on. We're gonna swipe up and it looks like you just set up Graphene OS for the first time. So we'll select start, set up your language, location services. I'm gonna skip this in this example, but you should set this up to secure the profile. Again, I'm gonna skip this for the example. We have no apps to restore and select start. So as you can see, we're on the new profile that we created. 
The background is different. It's like a fresh install of Graphene OS. All the default apps. The other way I want to demonstrate how to switch profiles. This one to me is way more convenient. You swipe down from the top, pull down again. And right here we can see the profile icon that's been added. Select that. We can see all the available profiles here. We want to go back to the owner profile. Select that. If you had a passcode or a fingerprint enabled on this profile, it would prompt for that first. But since I don't have any setup on this phone, it just switches automatically. Again, we swipe up. We're right where we left off. Again, we're back on the owner profile, but now we want to go back to the other profile since that's where we're going to be installing the services. So again, select that icon. Select the other profile you created. And we are back. I'm going to switch back to screen recording now since it's a little bit easier to see. So now that we have our other profile created, the next step is to actually install the Google Play services. So Google Play is actually divided up into three different apps. We have the services framework, we have the Play services, and the Play store. So in order to download the actual files we need to install for the Google Play services, you need to open the instruction page on your device. So we're going to go ahead and open Vanadium, type in grapheneos.org. Once you get here, slide over and select Usage. Scroll down and select Sandboxed Google Play. Scroll down a bit until you get to the installation section where you can see the three links to the actual APKs. So for the first one, we're gonna select com.google.android.gsf. On this page, select the 31 slash directory. And then here we have the base.apk. Select that. Download. It's a quick warning in the browser that an APK can harm your device, but we want to download this and install it, so click OK. Once that finishes, select Open. By default, apps are blocked from installing APKs for security purposes, so select Settings. Allow from this source. You should see that pop up now for Google Services Framework. Make sure it says Google Services Framework since that's the first one we're installing. Once you confirm that, click Install. Once that's completed, select Done. Hit the Back button there. We have to go back in our browser, so go back. Back again. And the next one is com.google.android.gms. Select that. Again, select the directory. You will see base.apk again here. Select that. This warning is just that the file name already exists. Since the first one was named base.apk, this one is the same, so it's just appending a 1 to the name. Select Download. Same warning again. Click OK. Once that finishes, select Open. This one is for Google Play Services. Once you confirm it says that, select Install. This file is a little bit larger, so this one will take a little bit longer to install. So that did take about two minutes to install. So if it takes about that long or longer, don't worry. It's working in the background, it just takes some time. So once you see app installed, go ahead and select done. Go back again, go back one more time. So the last one we need to install now is com.android.vending. This one's actually a little bit more complicated to install. You can see here on the official instructions, use a split APK installer to install all five of the APKs for com.android.vending android.vending together. So before we actually do the install for that, we need to download a split APK installer. So click the three dots in the top right hand corner, select new tab, and in the search type in A-E-F-Y-R-S-A-I. Again, I'll leave a link down below in the description for you to reference in case you just want to type it manually in your browser and not go through a search engine. So the first result here we can see github aefyr slash sai, select that. Now on this page, scroll down until you get to the section labeled releases. Select the sai 4.5. And underneath assets here we have sai-4.5.apk, select that. You'll see the pop-up, download. Again, same warning as before since we're downloading an APK. Select OK. Once that finishes, select Open. 
you want to install this app, click install. And then click done. So now that we have the split APK installer set up, we're going to head back to the graphene instructions. Select com.android.vending. Select the directory. And now we need to download the five APKs in this folder. So the first one, select the base.apk. Again, this file already exists, so it's going to append the number two to it. You're going to need to remember this later because we're going to have to select this APK inside the split APK installer. I'll mention that again, just so you don't forget. Select download. Once that finishes, select the next one. Download. Each time you'll get the warning that you're downloading APKs that can be harmful. Select download. And then the last one. So at this point, we have all five of the APKs downloaded, and now we need to install them together. So to do that, swipe up to go to your home screen. Swipe up again. We can see SAI, select that. Select install APKs. I'm just gonna use the internal file picker. You have to allow it to access the files on your device because we downloaded files. Select allow. On this page, you'll have a list of the folders on your device. We're going to select download because that's where the Vanadium browser downloads go to. And as I mentioned earlier, since we downloaded three different base.apks, we want the most recent one, which is base with the number two APK. Select that. You can also confirm because the timestamp is the most recent one compared to the other two. And then lastly, we need to select the other four APKs that we downloaded from grapheneos.org. So this first one here, SAI, that's the split APK installer. We don't want to select that. So we're going to be selecting the bottom four. All of those should start with split underscore. So make sure you selected all the split underscore and then the most recent base.apk. Once you confirm that, select select. You can just leave all the default check marks here. You don't need to change those at all. And then click install. Again, similar to Vanadium, by default apps are blocked from installing APKs. So go into settings, allow from this source. You'll see the pop-up now. Do you want to install this app? Make sure it says Google Play Store. Once you confirm that, go ahead and click install. So you might have seen a, a white screen for a moment. Just ignore that. That's just SAI working in the background. Once it is completed, though, you will see Google Play Store has been installed. You can go ahead and click OK. And then once we swipe up, we can now see that Play Store is installed on our device. So now back on the official instruction page, the next step is to give a battery optimization exception to Google Play services for features like push notifications to work properly in the background. It is not needed for the other two apps. So to do that, we're going to go into settings, select apps, select see all apps, scroll down to Google Play services, select that. We can see battery, select battery, and then select unrestricted. So at this point, the phone won't put the app on pause or anything else like that to save battery. It'll just let it run in the background so your notifications and everything else can work as expected. So once you have that, we can go back, swipe up and go to the home screen. So the next step after that is after installing the apps, you should open the Play Store and press sign in to trigger initialization. So signing in to the actual Play Store is optional, but if you want to use apps that you've purchased in the past, you will need to sign in. So like the instructions say, select Play Store, Press sign in. Pressing sign in triggers the initialization. Like I said before, signing in is optional, so I'm not going to sign in. Swipe up to close that. So now that everything is installed, you will notice a new option in settings. So if you open up settings, you go to apps, you have something down here called Sandbox Google Play. There's some options in here, different configurations, but the install instructions do cover that already, so I'm not going to cover that in this video. So for that, I'm just going to install Aurora and install a Google camera on the phone and then show you the results. So as I mentioned earlier, we did install this in a completely separate profile. Therefore, apps only installed in this profile will work with the Google services that we installed. So here we have Google camera. If I select that, we can see that it opens, it works. I could take pictures. Things work as expected.
So now at this point, we're back on the owner profile where we did not install Google Play services. So as expected, if we go to Google Camera, which I installed earlier today, we just see a black screen and it does not work as expected. So that was just a quick example showing how profiles keep apps separate. If you want to use Play services with all your apps currently installed, install Play services on the owner profile. If you want to manually switch profiles when you want to use those Google services, then install them in a separate profile.